All right, Brian, let's now talk about the 30s. Okay, in our 30s, life changes a little bit. We still have tons of time uh, to continue building wealth, tons of opportunity, but man, life gets messy. I am living this right now. It is a messy stage of life because what happens in our 30s is our commitments increase. We start a family, we get married, we start a family, we buy the house, we have job commitments, we have community commitments, we have all this stuff going on, and yet our disposable income goes lower and lower and lower and lower because all of these things start pulling on us. So in our 30s, it's easy, frankly, for us to just take our eyes off the ball. Yeah, we, we internally, we call this the Reby slide, and that's uh, because it's the messy middle. And um, I love it because it is it's so true. In the 20s, you're going to look at your life and go, how in the world? What, what was I spending all my time doing? Because as soon as the kids start showing up, you're like, whoa, my commitments are way up here. Yep. But yet I still, my disposable income Yes, I'm making more money, but it seems like there's a lot more stuff pulling at your purse, pulling at your wallet. It's just there's so many things. That's why we call it the messy middle. Don't get discouraged. I get it. It's hard, but you still have so many decades. If you can just stay committed, if you can stay disciplined and really focus on still powering and persevering through this stage of your life, you will be greatly, greatly rewarded. And that's what we want to cover with the three buckets and how you should focus on that. So in your 30s, there's a chance that your tax-free bucket will be changing a little bit. Because again, for most folks, your income increases in your 30s as you continue progressing along Mm -hmm. in your career. So maybe you cross above the income threshold where you can't directly contribute to a Roth IRA anymore. Now, that's a good thing. Generally speaking, making more money is better than making less money. If you're curious, the income phase outs for 2023 are between $138,000 and $153,000 for single individuals, $218,000 to $228,000 for married. If you're over those income limits, you may not be able to put money directly into your Roth anymore, but There is a backdoor strategy. There is a way, if you have the correct account structure, that you can continue to build your tax-free bucket. So don't just think because you're making more money, you have to give up on this bucket now. Yeah, and it's one of those things where a very small group, majority of you are still going to use tax-free both on your employer plan as well as with your Roth IRA, whether it's normal contributions or backdoor. But there are a portion of you who go be financial mutants. Maybe you go beyond and you have to do tax deferred, but we'll get into that second. The big thing I want to focus on is health savings accounts. As we talked about, messy middle means you might be having children, your family's expanding. We love health savings accounts because of that triple tax advantage, but there's a problem with them is that you have to, they are attached to, required to be attached to a high deductible health plan. That works great if you have no need to go pull off of your health insurance because you realize with a high deductible plan, the reason the government gives you all these incentives is you have to cover the majority of your medical expenses out of either what you contribute Mm -hmm. to the health savings account or just out of after-tax dollars. It might make sense while you have a growing family. Really pay attention on an annual basis. What are your plans? Because maybe the year that you are having a growing Mm -hmm. family, you're having a new baby come into the household like you have in the past year, Bo. Pay attention to, should you go more to that Cadillac insurance where it has low deductibles, doesn't qualify for health savings accounts, but gives you a lot more benefits for your premium dollars. So again, you have to make sure, even though we love tax-free bucket, it's not tax-free at the cost of everything. So in your 30s, you need to assess this because what's probably going to happen is the tax-deferred bucket is going to get more of your attention. This is likely going to become a much bigger planning tool in your 30s because one of the absolute best legal ways to hide money from the government is through an employer-sponsored retirement plan. And you get to choose, do I want to hide the money now in terms of doing it pre-tax or do I want to hide the money later in terms of doing Roth? Well, in your 30s, you have to make the determination which one makes the most sense. Do I keep doing the Roth 401k bucket? Am I in the tax bracket that substantiates that? Or do I need to shift my contributions over to pre-tax? Yeah, this is definitely that that decade where if you're in your, especially in your late 30s, you start earn, hitting a lick with your income. You, you will want to start paying attention to you know, if your incomes, if you add the federal, the state, and you're well above 30% on the taxes you're paying, you're going, maybe I need the deduction now. Mm-hmm. Why, why is that important? And the reason I always share this is that realize the goal is, is that when you retire, 
at some point you'll have a you won't have earned income anymore, yep. which is your biggest income generator that's taxed. Well, if you're now living off of your assets and you have the three bucket strategy, there is an opportunity, especially with the way they keep pushing required minimum distri- distributions higher and higher. We're at age 75 mm-hmm. for a lot of you who are watching this now. You will have the opportunity to hopefully manipulate legally the tax code in retirement to take distributions, whether it's Roth conversions or just to take distributions for yourself at a much lower tax bracket, even if tax rates go up. I just have this feeling, and you have to. This is something you have to make an assumption on. Nobody knows. Nobody has the crystal ball. The government and elected officials are always scared of older people because they vote. So they incentivize a lot of benefits for retirees, whether it's your State tax mm-hmm. taxation is not deductible on Social Security or your pensions or your retirement distributions. Pay attention to all that stuff. That's how we can build up this fact that once you get to a higher income, it might make more sense to take the, the, the income benefit now because you think that there's going to be a benefit for taking it at a lower tax rate in the future. So again, focus on that because there's a chance even in your 30s, you might start saving in your taxable account in your 30s. You might move to step seven. You want to show them the financial world? Oh, yeah, you, you know. might move to hyperaccumulation. You might be moving into that in your 30s, but it's not a given. You want to make sure that you'd continue to stay true to the financial order of operations. And again, it's okay if this bucket isn't growing yeah. Now, if you're someone who's part of the FIRE movement and you're thinking you want to exit the workforce inside of your 40s or in your early 50s, yeah, maybe you need to adjust. But for the majority of folks, for the majority of folks who are building, there's a good chance that even in your 30s, after-tax bucket is not going to get a lot of love. Yeah, there's still a lot of incentives in the tax code to save in those tax-free and those tax-deferred <laughs> accounts. Don't worry. In your 40s, you're going to have a chance to load mm-hmm. it up in that after-tax account, but make sure it has a time and a place. Bo, let's check in once again with Manny the Mutant. I'd love to see, because think about this, 20s, we, he had less than a decade. He yep. only had four to five years to start saving and investing. Now Manny has been at this for going on close to, to 15, 14, 15 years. Yep. What does it look like now? Yeah, let's again, let's review our assumptions really quick. He started investing at the age of 25, saving 25% of his gross income. He's going to do that all the way until 65. He started his career at 25, making $50,000 a year, and he gets 5% pay raises each year. He follows the financial order of operations. He understands what to do with his next dollar, and he gets an employer match. If he puts in 6%, he gets a 3% employer match. Look at this. By the time he gets to the end of his 30s, at the end of this decade, his income has now grown to almost $100,000 a year. His final income at age 39 is $98,997. I'm going to call that $100,000 a year. But look at his portfolio. He has accumulated almost $530,000. Yeah, I imagine the, the part that's exciting to me is close to half a million of that is tax-free. Tax-free. I mean, he is well on his path to being a seven-figure tax-free yep. millionaire. That is, that's incredible. So this is the part, and when, like I said, started at 25. This is not the 20-year-old that we talk about 88 times over, a mm-hmm. 21-year-old. This is somebody who waited until age 25 to start. That's right. But you can see Manny is well on his way to becoming a tax-free millionaire, to becoming a seven-figure millionaire with all their investments in their 40s, but just being diligent, making it through the first 10000 then 50000 past 100000 Now he's over half a million dollars. Lots of opportunities to celebrate for Manny the Mutant. And again, I want to remind you, Manny didn't go, he didn't start a business. He didn't figure out something crazy. He just was consistent in his saving. Uh, in his 30s, he's maxing out his Roth IRA. He's maxing out his HSA. And he's putting more into his Roth 401k, but do you realize at this point, he still has not maxed out his Roth. He's still not hit 22,500 in the Roth 401k portion. He's just doing the stuff that's available to most of us. And he's still not even doing the pre-tax. He's still doing the Roth side, not building the after-tax. I think it's amazing that here he is at age 39, over half a million dollars. It's incredible. So let's look at his journey to abundance, Brian. Remember, at 29, he'd accumulated nine, almost 91,000. Here, a decade later, 530,000. 
well on his way to being a prodigious accumulator of wealth. If you're not using this tool, if this is not something you've seen, go download it, learn.moneyguy.com. Start tracking your net worth so you can see your journey to abundance visualized. I, I think it's pretty amazing that you can you can see here, on the look at the ages, 25 is when he started, crossed over the average accumulator of wealth by, by the time he, you know, he was right before he reached right 30. Before 30 yep. And now look at it, he's very much on the path to... to Intersecting with the prodigious accumulator of wealth, um, right as he's getting into his forties, that, that's pretty amazing to see this thing gaining traction. Remember, we think linear. Your investments will think in a compounding. That's why we're always saying: make sure you're maximizing compounding growth opportunities. Manny's rocking it. You too can do this. And remember, Bo's already hit this. He didn't invent something. He didn't have to go take some crazy risk and start a business. This is just what, the if you take the three ingredients, discipline, taking that discipline and turning into margin that goes into income and assets that get invested and turn into your army of dollars, that then you give it the component of time, you too can be Manny the Mutant. And I think, and, and also, I just want to point out, Manny is not out there trying to find the next latest and greatest investment. We're assuming... Very conservative rate of returns. We assumed that age 25, he was making 9.5%. And then at age 26, 9.4, and then 9.3, and then 9.2, and then 9.1. And it's going to continue to decrease as this portfolio gets more and more and more conservative through time. We think that these are incredibly realistic expectations that very likely could reflect your journey as well. 